Welcome to another tutorial and in today's video I'm going to be giving you more tips on how to improve your pictures of birds in flight. And number one is sun position. Now I think this is, is, this is the most important thing when it comes to birds in flight photography, hence why I put it as number one. You could have the best equipment in the world, you could have fantastic technique, but if the lighting isn't right, then you're just not gonna be able to take those really good eye-catching images. As a general rule, I would say to try and keep the sun behind you. The reason for this is that it just avoids uh, unsightly shadows. So when it's at more of an angle, you can it's a common problem with birds in flight. You can get the shadows underneath the bird, particularly under the wings, uh, the wings casting shadow across the body. So if you keep the sun behind you, it, it kind of alleviates that problem. However, with that said, when the sun gets high in the sky, then it just always is a problem really. It's pretty much impossible to avoid that when the sun gets too high. So really the answer to this, and the answer is to get the best birds in flight images, is to use low sunshine. So if you're photographing when the sun is out, try and do it when the sun is really really low in the sky. If you can do this within half an hour, certainly an hour of sunrise and sunset, then you're not going to be getting the sun coming from above, it's going to be coming much more uh, from underneath the bird and what that means is it's just going to light up naturally, it's going to light up the underside, illuminate the underside of the birds, the body and under the wings. So if you can shoot with low sunshine, you're almost always going to get a better success rate. And also consider side lighting. You can get a really lovely quality of light from side lighting for birds in flight. So rather than have the sun behind you or maybe just over your shoulder, consider actually shooting uh, almost at right angles, like 90 degrees to where the sun is. Again, this is best gonna be done when the sun is really low in the sky. It's gonna illuminate the undersides. And I think it's, it can be better because I think you can get less glare and less reflection rather than the sun coming from more behind you. Uh, so if you get the bird flying particularly towards the sun, and the light's kind of grazing across from the head and then across the body. You get a really beautiful quality of lighting by doing that. Tip number two is all about wing position. For birds in flight, it makes a lot of sense to use continuous shooting and take a lot of pictures because you'll end up with different poses in the air and some pictures will be sharper than others. Uh, but the wing position is also really important when it comes to the lighting. So depending on the strength of the sun and the direction, then you may end up with shadows underneath the bird because of the wing position. So if you're able to get the bird with the wings in the down position or the up position, uh, then you're not gonna have as many problems with the shadows. So if you can get it in that pose, then you should be pretty free of shadows and get light nice and evenly across the bird. Tip number three is to follow the speed and the movement of the bird. So try not to think about keeping the bird in the center of the frame, thinking I've got to keep the focus points on it. Don't worry about composition. Uh, when your technique's sorted and your camera's set up as you want it, let the camera do the work. And all you need to do is get into that mentality of thinking about tracking the speed and the movement of the subject. Now that is going to be different for different species of bird. So um, a swan or a cormorant, for example, is generally going to fly in a straight line, uh, much slower and more direct and pretty straightforward, not erratic, much easier to track. Whereas a bird like a, a gull or a lapwing, for example, a display in lapwing, which is an absolute nightmare, it's gonna change direction haphazardly all over the place. It's gonna go up, down, it's gonna change speed, direction just everywhere. Uh, so the best thing to do is to watch the bird you're trying to photograph, just watch how it flies and try and get used to that speed movement if it does change direction. And that's gonna help you a lot when you get the camera on it. If you go into the playlist section of my channel then you'll find a whole playlist of videos all about photographing birds in flight including this one. Number four is stance, and this has massively helped me when tracking birds in flight. So if I was tracking the bird here uh, from my left across to my right, what I would try to do is kind of point my body in the direction of where the bird is going. So if the bird was flying across here to, towards my right, then I'd point my body in this direction, get my feet in this direction, follow the bird through, and I'm just kind of panning from my waist. So I'm panning all the way across from my waist, and it's much better that way. The other thing you want to do is to put your opposite leg slightly out in front. So if I was going across to the right, I'd put my left leg in front, just slightly in front of my body, again, pointing in that sort of end direction of where the bird's going. And then I would 
pan across and you can keep panning you can keep panning smoothly like all the way around and it really helps you to track that movement smoothly and to follow through and similar technique if you're shooting on a tripod so if I was panning with a bird from my left across to my right here, then I'd sort of try and position my body uh, behind the camera here, pointing roughly towards where I think the bird's going to end up. And then I'd start over here, and I'm kind of reaching across a bit, I realise that, so it's more uncomfortable as you start. And then I track the bird as it was flying across, and I get to here, it gets more comfortable and then finish up kind of nice and square on. I think that's a better way to do it. What I wouldn't do is put your left leg out like you would for hand holding. It's very different because when you're hand holding, uh, your whole upper body's moving and the whole camera's actually moving across. Whereas with the tripod, because it's fixed in one position, um, it just would make it a little bit more uncomfortable. So I'd say just get yourself positioned square on, roughly in the direction of the birds flying. And tip number five is intermittent shooting. Now, if you've got uh, one of the more advanced cameras, uh, certainly a couple of Canons, Olympus, Sony, some of these new camera bodies have amazing tracking autofocus systems. Uh, you've got eye animal tracking, and you may be able to just keep everything engaged and it focuses absolutely fantastically. There's some amazing kit out there now. Um, if your equipment isn't quite as advanced as that, now I would definitely try this technique. And that is to kind of take your pictures of birds in flight in short bursts and this is what I tend to do. So I don't keep uh, the focus engaged the whole time whether it's your finger or your thumb for back button. What you can do is kind of engage and disengage the focus at different times. So the reason I would do this, um, when I do this particularly, is, is if the bird changes direction all of a sudden, or it goes further away, it goes closer, it changes the distance to the camera. All those things are kind of giving an adjustment, something new for the autofocus to, to do and to catch up with. So if I was photographing, uh, let's say so a short eared owl, that would be nice. Uh, if it starts off in the distance, I'll get a quiet focus, take a couple of shots, um, then it might start coming towards me. I might wait just a few seconds, wait till it gets to a little bit closer, engage the focus again, take a few more shots, uh, follow it across. Then let's say it suddenly swirls round, changes direction, and engage the focus again, take a few more pictures. So that's how I work. Um, every time the bird changes distance or direction, I'll try and re-engage the focus. And I definitely say, if you think your camera and lens is struggling with keeping uh, the bird in focus, staying locked on and tracking it, then just try this technique. Just disengage the focus and then re-engage it again. It's kind of giving the camera another opportunity to lock on to acquire focus. So if you feel your equipment's really struggling, give that a go. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the other tutorials on my channel. Uh, do subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.